So the countdown to the return of Gaelic Games is well and truly on. Players everywhere are up in the ante with their training. Our next guest is one of those players, Dean Rock, six-time All-Ireland winner. You're very welcome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to the chat. Uh, it must be great to have a date, though, to know that you're going to be back with some meaningful action soon enough. Yeah, look, I think that was the most challenging part of it. The whole last couple of uh, weeks and months was not knowing when, when fixtures were, were, were fixed for or what was around the corner. But I suppose at least we have some sort of roadmap now, obviously with the clubs first and then followed by the Inter-County Championship in October. So it's uh, it's certainly given us uh, a bit of a pep in our step, you know, as, as, as players. And it's certainly something to look forward to. And just like when you when you heard the news that like you know the that there was going to be championship, there was going to be club championship as well. Does your mindset switch automatically, and you go right, okay, I need to start making a plan, and um, you know just kind of up the gears, move through the gears a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think um, initially you're just kind of just tipping away and, and ticking over with your your gym stuff and, and obviously your 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 fitness work. But um, yeah, obviously once once we know that the club championship is starting in July, it's um, you know, you do have to up the ante. You do have to, you know, nail down your, your skill set a little bit more and, and focus on your, your fitness. Because um, obviously once we're back as a group, you know, I, I'd imagine we're going to do a lot of football because we've missed a lot of football um, over the last number of, of months. So it's just really just keeping on top of that uh, physical stuff and uh, cardio stuff. And then uh, once we're back, we're back to play football, which is, which is great as a footballer. So when you're a free taker and you know that you're going to be back to play football, do you get a little bit worried that you haven't been kind of keeping up or have you been doing lots of practice anyway? Yeah, no, look, I've, I've, been, I've been keeping it up uh, at least once a week anyway, the free taking side of things. It's a certain part of my game that I, I take huge pride in and um, I don't want to let it slip in any way. So it's just important, obviously, to, to keep that up and, and just have your purposeful practice. And obviously, you're going to be a little rusty uh, with a few kicks here and there. But hopefully, as I said, once we get back to training and, and playing some uh, challenge matches amongst each other or uh, challenge games against other, other, other club teams or county teams, um, you know, it, my kicking should be uh, up to scratch by then. There'd be no excuses come uh, October for Intercounty Championship. Anyway. So what kind of training do you do to, to keep sharp with your free taking? Like, is it just over the bar all the time or, or what do you do? Yeah, look, I suppose down through the years, I've probably just developed my own um, habits around my kicking. And, you know, as a kid, I probably would have kicked, you know, 200 balls a session. And, um, you know, I, I started to realise that my hips and groins and knees and stuff weren't, wasn't really going to be able to sustain that for much longer. So I had to change my own training methods. And, uh, yeah, look, predominantly now it's probably just 35 or 40 kicks a session. But every kick that I would do would be really purposeful and I put myself into match type situations and try and execute the kick as best I can rather than, you know, kicking too many balls under fatigue. You know, you've got to get myself ready for the next session. And um, I think once I'm putting myself into my own, you know, routine and process time and time again, if I do that 35, 40 times in a kicking session, you know, I'm happy with that. I walk away with some learning and uh, yeah, that's it really. So it's, you know, less is more uh, when it comes to the free taking for me nowadays. Do you practice with somebody or do you prefer to do it on your own? Uh, yeah, look, I, I still involve my dad. Um, it's probably something that we continue to uh, bond over. So um, over the last number of weeks, he's come up to uh, Malahide Castle since the, the lockdown and restrictions on, on travel has, has eased. So he's uh, been up there with me. But yeah, it's something that I'd like to just continue to do with dad as it's, it's a way of our, to keep our connection strong, I suppose. And uh, it's something to, to keep him involved in, in the kicking. And he's involved with Ballymore Kickers with the club team as well as a selector. So it's... Uh, you know, it, it's nice to have him there and it's uh, certainly um, something that gives me confidence having him by my side when I'm back in the freeze. Let's go. Does he give you constructive criticism? Or does uh, he just get the balls? <laughs> absolutely. Well, it's, yeah, the, the tables have turned slightly. For years, I was just behind the goals, collecting the balls for him and uh, now, now it's his turn to, to run, or, run or, or, or stumble across to, to get the balls now. So it's, uh, yeah, no, look, he, he gives me advice and, and, and even to this day, he continues to give me some advice because I certainly don't know know it all and uh, he's a lot more uh, years of experience uh, over me so it's, it's certainly something that I welcome. So like free taking in front of 82,000 people in Crow Park I imagine it's a huge amount of pressure. Were you always able to cope with the pressure or is that something that you had to work on? It's certainly something that with, with experience um, I, I, I got an awful lot better with um, you know, down through the years, I've always got great confidence from my own preparation and the amount of practice that I put in. And um, I just think for, for any young guy kind of starting off to kick freeze, I think you just have to be really diligent with your preparation. And 
Uh, it certainly works for me. I, I've been always really, really prepared when it's come to free take. And, and then, you know, when it comes to the actual match day situation in front of 82,000 people, that I have the confidence to execute the kick due to all the practice that I've put in. So um, it, it might sound simple, but it's just really just the hard work that you put into it from a, you know, from a technical perspective to a mindset perspective. And, and then obviously it's just about executing under pressure as well. But um, usually if you do the work, you'll get the results. So there's a good chance, well, we don't know yet. We're, we're not sure whether crowds are going to come back. They might, they might not. Everything's a bit up in the air. But there's a chance that you could be in Crow Park on Christmas week with no fans kicking a free to win on All-Ireland. What does that make you feel? Yeah, I think I'd be looking for some tips from, from the rugby guys then because they're obviously used to kicking in front of, uh, you know, with, with a lack of noise and, and, you know, respect, I suppose, for the kickers. Whereas in, you know, Crow Park, you could have half of the stadium booing you and the other, the, other, the other half biting their nails so it's 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 a totally different a, a different scenario and uh something that yeah look i suppose you've always kicked and uh, when i've gone practicing freeze with that you always kick in isolation and in front of nobody so it might even feel a bit more uh normal than than it usually does so it, it could be a positive <laughs> i have a picture now of your dad standing on the hill by himself with you <laughs> kicking in a, a free to win on all ireland <laughs> Oh God, yeah. I don't, I don't actually know if he's ever been to the hill, believe it or not. There you go. Yeah, he's uh, maybe, maybe he might have to go there now. So a winter championship, like how do you feel about football on the heavy ground in the bad weather? Yeah, look, I, look, I think uh, we, we understand that it's a, it's a new year. It's a, just a, it's a different year and it's a challenging year. And I think everyone's just keen to play, to play football. Um, ideally, look, the, the championship is hard ground, summer. Uh, lovely weather but uh, it's just one of those years that it's going to be different this year and it's something that um, everybody has to get their head around and just just get on with it really because there's no point you know wishing that you know the ground was harder or the weather was better it, it is what it's going to be and uh, the best team ultimately will will, will win the All-Ireland and uh, there can't be any excuses for any team everyone's you know level playing field and uh, it'll just be interesting to see. Obviously, there's totally different variables in the winter with, with, with the conditions and, and, and whatnot. But as I said, that's just something that we have to just get acclimatised to and get used to. And uh, we're used to playing in the, I suppose, the bad weather in, in Ireland here. And, you know, we've experienced the National League uh, with the weather wasn't too great this year either. So um, it's just something that, look, as I said, um, it's a level playing field for everyone. So we'll just see what happens. It's also very realistic that Desi's coaching will have only been in really bad weather like the league in uh, early uh, February, March and then a championship October and November. So um, it's, it's a strange one, really. Yeah, it's a strange one. I suppose for once, I suppose the clubs will probably get all their county players at the peak of their powers, really. And, you know, in the really good weather at the time of the year, because usually you play a club championship, it's you know, October, November time and, you know, the weather, the pitches are a lot, you know, soggier and not so good. So from a club perspective, I think it'll, it'll make for really good viewing and really good competitive club championships. And that's something we're looking forward to too is, is obviously, you know, getting back to the club and, and, and trying to obviously win a club championship and, and do our very best there before we get back to Dublin. Yeah, you must be glad like to have that time now as well with the club because, you know, we know for J players, like club is everything really. Yeah, that's it. Look, and, and, and the club teams are you know, back. You know, I suppose the facilities are back open now uh, this evening, which is which is great for everybody. And um, it's something that, yeah, every, the club lads are really looking forward to, and particularly myself and, and the five other lads on the Dublin panel who who don't really get the opportunity to train or play at the club as often as we would like. Um, we're certainly probably going to get two two league games now with Ballymun and and you're guaranteed your three group games in the championship. So that's something really to look forward to and, you know, puts you in a good position then obviously to when you come back to the inter-county thing that you're, that you're ready and you're ready to play football. But that's the big thing. You try and give back to the club as best you can and not, you're not, you're not, you don't always get an opportunity because you're quite tired at the end of the year after an inter-county season. So it'd be nice for once to uh, do it when you're when nice and fresh. And like, just in terms of going back, like, how do you feel about going back? You know, when you look at other sports and nearly every sport, there are positives for coronavirus popping up here and there and people are having to cocoon, but they're professionals. Yeah, look, that, that's it. Look, there's going to be challenges. I, I think the big thing is that obviously guys are going to do it at their own accord. And, you know, if they want to go back, 
they will go back. I think nobody is really pressurising anyone to go and play the game. It's As I said, it, it is an amateur game. And um, obviously, look, people are in different scenarios and situations where they, they might go home to vulnerable uh, parents or grandparents or siblings or whatever the case may be. And that's going to be very challenging for them. But um, I, look, you just have to trust that people are adhering to all of the guidelines and they're not going to put, um, you're not going to put anyone else into any sort of danger. I think that's the big thing that people just try and, adhere to the guidelines as best as possible and um, it gives everyone the best a chance you know so what did you miss most about football when you didn't have it it was just really the the social the social aspect of things and um you know the amount of times you would have given out about going to training on a cold tuesday or thursday night and and um, you know you really took it for granted kind of missing just the crack of the lads the, the hour or so in the dressing room beforehand and then actually the session itself and and um, it's certainly something that i think all of us um, we'll take away from this experience is that we are we are very privileged to you know be able to go out and train and you know compete at a high level and uh, it's certainly something that I won't be taking for granted anymore and it was just really the social interaction with all your mates from a club perspective or a county perspective that I miss the most um, and it's something that I'm really welcoming and you know glad that it's, it's back and on the horizon now. For somebody like you who's been on the road for a long time like it's a lot of years in you even though you're still relatively young. Do you think the break? <laughs> all right, all right. Do you think the break will have done you good? Yeah, look, I, I hope so. Only time will tell. But uh, yeah, look, my body feels really good, and uh, yeah, I'm 30 years of age now. So, um, you're getting into your 30s. That's when people start to write you off. And, and say, <laughs> they start retiring oh, you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you're like, Jesus, I feel great, but. Uh, but that's the thing, you know, my body feels really good. And yeah, and I like that. I think I think it's a it's a welcomed break for everybody. Um I think most sports people will, will tell you that. Obviously, guys who are playing really, really well uh, back in March or, or, or February and then the season was stopped, obviously it's unfortunate for them. But um for other guys who as you said, have been on the go a long time, it does give the you know the joints a, a, a bit of a rest and uh, it's certainly something I've enjoyed. Obviously you, we use it as an opportunity to kind of work in different areas as well. So it's been, a, it's been a, I suppose, obviously a very challenging period, but at the same time, from a sporting perspective, it's it allowed the body to heal and to work on those different areas. So what areas did you work on? Just funnily enough, I looked at a picture of Johnny Sexton this morning and it was the first time he'd been back training since before lockdown that people had seen him and everybody's commentating that he looks way bigger um, yeah. and stronger. What, what about you? What have you been working on? I don't. I wasn't working on that aspect of things. I don't think, but it was. Uh, yeah, just from 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 from, from everything. We just kind of you can concentrate a little bit more on your speed stuff. And as you said, obviously I'm getting a little bit older, so the legs start, might start to go. But the speed is one one thing that you want to try and maintain as best as you can. So it's just trying to get down to the real technical parts of the, the speed training. And and the other thing then is just trying to stay on top of your skills practice because you know, ultimately we're Gaelic footballers and. You know, games are decided by the you know the skill levels of players as well as obviously your fitness and, and, and strength and different aspects. But for me, it's just really, it was always just trying to step and stay on top of the uh, the skill side of things and maybe try and improve uh, the foot that I stand on in terms of my left foot. I don't you really, really use it too often, so it's just trying to you have the time to work on those different things and off the field you're, you're you're in the kitchen trying to work on your cooking and stuff like that so it's been uh you haven't had the luxury of going down to the local restaurant so that's been that's been a positive for me it's uh it's certainly something that i've i've used as an opportunity to to grow in, in different areas so it's been uh it's been enjoyable so okay well away from the skills which is it's something that you clearly enjoy working on what's your favorite kind of exercise training uh to do oh well, look obviously most lads like the gym and um, that's kind of uh, that, that that's that, that that's certainly a, a thing that guys enjoy whether it's the buzz in the gym itself or, or, or guys just getting bigger and, and stronger but for me look it's just about all the the functional different movements or whether i'm doing the, my back squatting or or bench press it's just something the, the two sort of core exercises that i would use and uh, mostly to develop my strength and power side of things. So they're certain, certainly two of the exercises that I do, but you know, whether I'm at home or whether we're with Dublin, we're predominantly doing two gym sessions a week. Um, and look, uh, as the season goes on, then you'll, you'll come into a bit more of the speed and, and, and power type of exercises. And you know, as you sort of break away from the strength side of things and move into the speed and power, that's kind of the really enjoyable thing because you know that you're coming closer to competition and, and championship. And um, that's certainly something that um, I've enjoyed and we'll, we'll look forward to now in the next couple of weeks. 
Dublin definitely know how to peak at the right time, just given the uh, last few years and the success. It'd be a different challenge now trying to peak at a different time of the year. Yeah, look, I don't envy the lads' challenge, and um, Brian Cullen and the guys there. It's it, it, it's it's very difficult, and the hardest part has probably been individuals overtraining in these couple of weeks and months because the weather has been so good and guys can't really sit in and, and do nothing. You know, they're they're mad keen to go out and do running and and gym work or whatever else. So that's kind of been the biggest challenge, is trying trying to maintain all that stuff. Um, because obviously the championship's not until October, which is still a good, you know, four months away. So it's, it's, uh, it, it is it is usually difficult. But look, I think that they've managed to do it so far um, over the last number of years. And, you know, they're, they're a great team, uh, Brian Cullen and the strength and conditioning team. So, look, you, you, you put your full trust into them guys that they're going to have us, have us right. And it's just trying to adhere to what they're telling you because sometimes you might think that they're only giving you, you're not, they're not giving you enough, but ultimately they're the experts. So you just need to follow their uh, roadmap and, and, and go with that. When you look at when you started off playing for Dublin to now, like what are the main things that you find that you're doing differently just in terms of training? Yeah, look, for, for me, a lot of it was, a lot of it's recovery, to be quite honest. Um, like, obviously, when you're younger, you can train, you can train more and you don't get as tired as much for whatever reason. Whereas nowadays, it's just really, you know, this recovery sort of things that, um, that gives you a real competitive advantage over most of your opposition because everybody is doing the same exercises, the same running. And the same skills work, so everyone's doing the same training. So for me, it's just been all all about the recovery side of things. So whether that's getting to the sea, your massage, your different rehab exercises, and your sleep and nutrition. So for, it's just all those components, and they're all the things that you can control as an individual. And um, so not only are you getting a competitive advantage in that area over opposition, you're getting a little competitive advantage over you know guys on your own team as well who you're maybe coming up against as, in, with competition. So. Um, I think that's what's changed the most over the last number of years, different sort of uh, methods of, of recovery and, and and the power of that. You must be mad to get back on again, are you? Oh, yeah, look, that's it. You, you can't wait. You're, you're, you're jumping out of your skin. Obviously, you, you go back and you'll be doing the dreaded fitness tests and whatnot. But look, it's, that's just a reflection of where you're at at the time. Um, no one's going to really panic too much if, if you're lagging a little behind from where you where you left off. But it's... Uh, yeah, it'll just be great to get back playing football. Hopefully the weather will continue to, to pick up and we'll have a good July and August and September and, and then really, you know, go club championship and get ready for uh, an, an odd inter-county championship season in the in the weather and the Friday night lights or Saturday night lights or whatever way they want to put it. We'll all be stocking up on our waterproofs anyway. Uh, Dean Rock, thanks so much for joining me and best of luck over the next few months. Either way, we've got football back and whatever happens, it's, uh, it's great to have it and it's an exciting time. Thanks a million. Absolutely. Thank you.